All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about differentials. And so what exactly is a differential? Well, if you recall, when we looked at the limit definition of a derivative, we said that the limit as x approaches zero of the change in y divided by the change in x was equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero of the change in y divided by delta x or the change in x, right? So the change in y was some value of x that we picked plus some change in that value of x evaluated on the function minus the original value of that function, right? So this would give you the change in your y values because your y values come from plugging in x into your function. And so what we have here is that delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x, and that is the change in y, and then delta x represents the change in x. And so we know that the first derivative represents the slope of a function, right? That is what we found when we looked at the limit definition of a derivative. We were looking for the slope at a point on the function by using a tangent line. And so what we found was as delta x gets smaller, as it approaches zero, that the derivative f prime of x was approximately equal to the slope or the change in y divided by the change in x, right? When you first learned slope in algebra, you were told that it was rise over run or the change in your y values divided by the change in your x values, right? And so what we found was that the derivative was approximately equal to that slope at a particular point on a function. And so if we clean up our work a little bit here, then we can rearrange this approximation by multiplying both sides by delta x to find that delta y is approximately equal to the derivative f prime of x times delta x, right? If we multiply delta x to the other side here, we have delta x times f prime of x. And so if we just flip around the approximation, we have that delta y is approximately equal to f prime of x times delta x. And so why is this important? Well, in this situation, delta x is typically denoted with dx, and dx is called the differential of x. And so then we would keep our derivative the same, and then we would denote this f prime of x times dx with dy, and this is called the differential of y. And so let me show you what I mean here. If we have the function f of x equals x cubed, that would be the same as writing y is equal to x cubed, right? We're going to let f of x equal y. Then if we were to take the derivative of this function, y equals x cubed, we would have that dy dx is equal to three x squared, right? We just use the power rule on this x cubed term. And so if we multiplied both sides of this function by dx, the differential of x, we'll have that the differential of y or dy is equal to three x squared dx. And so what do you notice about this compared to this over here? Well, we have that the differential of y is equal to the derivative of our function x cubed, right? The derivative of the function times dx. And so this is the basic concept of differentials. If you're told to find the differential dy of a function, this is how you would find it. And so this right here is the definition of a differential. The differential dy is equal to the derivative of your function times dx. And so let's look at another example of using this definition and then evaluating it given a value of x and a value of dx. So here we wanna find the differential dy for this function, y equals two x to the fourth power minus three x cubed plus four x squared. And we wanna evaluate it at x equals one and dx equals 0 0.1. And so let's start by finding the differential dy of our function here. And so we'll take the derivative of this. So we'll have that dy dx is equal to four times two. So we'll have eight and then times x to the third power because we subtract one from our exponent four. Then we subtract three times three. So we'll have nine times x squared because we subtract one from our exponent of three. And then we'll add two times four, which is going to be eight and then times x because we subtract one from this exponent to just get one. And so then we're almost done to find the differential dy. We just have to multiply both sides by this dx term. And so if we do that, we'll have that the differential of y or dy is equal to 8x cubed minus 9x squared plus 8x, and then all of that times dx, right? We have this whole quantity, all of this, multiplied by dx. And this would be your differential. This is what dy is equal to. And so then if we wanna evaluate this at x equals one and dx equals 0 0.1, we just have to plug these values into our differential here. And so if we do that, we'll have that dy is equal to eight times one cubed minus nine times one squared, plus eight times one times dx, which we know is 0 0.1. 
And so then we'll continue this calculation up here. We'll have that dy is going to be equal to eight times one cubed, so eight times one. So we'll have eight minus nine times one squared, so minus nine, and then plus eight times one, which is eight. So we'll have plus eight, and that will be multiplied by 0 0.1. And so then 8 minus 9 is negative 1, plus 8 would be positive 7. And so then we'd have that dy is equal to 7 times 0 0.1. And so our answer here is that dy, or the differential of y, is equal to 0 0.7 when we evaluate the differential at x equals 1 and dx equals 0 0.1. And so this would be the answer to this problem. All right, so now it's important to notice that when you're working with differentials, that when delta x is really small, then dy is going to approximately be equal to delta y, right? So the differential of y is going to approximately be equal to the change in the values of y when delta x or the change in x is really small. And so let's test this. Let's see how true that is. And I think this is going to be very helpful to seeing what the difference between delta y and dy is, or the differential of y. And so let's take a look at an example and see if this holds true. So let's look at the function, let's say f of x is equal to 2x cubed. And we're gonna look at the specific value of x equals two and dx equals 0.01, right? And so then it's important to notice that this dx is also the change in x, and so this is actually going to be equal to delta x. And so unlike dy and delta y, which are approximately equal to each other, and you'll see why in just a little bit, dx and delta x are the same. They are the same value. And so then remember what delta y is equal to, right? Delta y, or the change in y, is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And so in this case, if we want to find what delta y is equal to in this scenario, we're gonna have to plug in x into our function and x plus delta x into our function as well. So let's start by plugging two, or x, into our function. So we'll have that f of two is equal to two times two cubed. And that's gonna be equal to two times eight, right? Because two cubed is eight, and that will be equal to 16. And so then let's plug in x plus delta x into our function, which is going to be two plus 0 0.01, right? Because we said dx is equal to 0 0.01, and that is equal to delta x. And so that means that this term right here, f of x plus delta x is the same as f of two plus 0 0.01, which is equal to f of 2.01. And so that will be equal to two times 2.01 cubed, right? We just plug 2.01 into our function. And so then this, I'm gonna plug into a calculator and we'll find that this is equal to 16.241202. And there's some more decimals there. But this is going to be our value of 2.01 on our function. And so now let's find delta y. Delta y is going to be equal to the difference of this value and this value, right? f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So we have f of x plus delta x right here and f of x right here. So we have 16.241202 and then more decimals minus 16. And so that will be equal to 0 0.241202, right? It's the same decimal values, but without 16, right? We subtracted that 16 out. And so this is delta y in this case. But let's go back and let's find what dy is using our evaluation method from before. And so if we clean up our work here, we'll still keep that we found that delta y is equal to this amount right here. And now let's look for dy or the differential of y. And so we'll start by saying that f of x is equal to y, which means that y would be equal to 2x cubed, right? We have that f of x is equal to 2x cubed. And so if we say that that is equal to y, then y is equal to 2x cubed. And then we can take the derivative of that. We'll have that dy dx is equal to 6x squared, right? Three times two is six, and then subtract one from your exponent to get two. And then if we multiply dx to both sides, we'll have that dy is equal to 6x squared dx. And now, if we want to evaluate the differential of y at x equals two and dx equals 0 0.01, we just got to plug those values into our differential. And so if we do that, we'll have that dy is equal to six times two squared, right? Our value of x is two, so two squared, and then times dx, which we said is 0 0.01. And so we'll have times 0 0.01. And so then dy will be equal to six times four, right? So we're gonna have 24 times 0 0.01, which means that dy is equal to 0 0.24. And so then look at our two values for delta y 
and dy, or the differential of y. Look at how close they are. We have for delta y that is equal to 0 0.241202, and then there's some more decimals. And then for dy, or the differential of y, it's equal to 0 0.24. So these are very close. And they would be even closer if we picked a smaller value for delta x or dx. Like if we picked 0 0.001, these two values would be even closer. So as you pick a small value of delta x, dy is approximately going to be equal to delta y. And so now you can kind of see why that is true. And so because of that, there's an actually really nice result that comes from that. And so let's take a look at that next. All right, so we just showed that the differential of y is approximately equal to delta y when delta x is really small. And so we can use this to actually find a very interesting equation or approximation by remembering what delta y was equal to, right? We said that delta y was equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And so then if we substitute this in for delta y over here, we'll have that dy, the differential of y, is approximately equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And so then remember what we said that the definition of dy is, or the differential of y. We said that the definition of a differential dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. Right, we looked at this at the very beginning of this lesson. Well, if we substitute this in for dy, then we find that f prime of x dx is approximately equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And so then we're gonna do one more thing here. If we add over this f of x term to the other side, notice what this term would be approximately equal to, right? So we're gonna have that f of x plus delta x is approximately equal to this term plus this term. So we'll have f of x, which is that term that we added over to this side, plus this term, which would be plus f prime of x delta x. And so now what is this right here? What did we just find? Well, what we found here is a formula that we can use to approximate the values on a function, right? So if we wanna know the value of a function x plus delta x, and we know what the value of the function is at x, we can find it by plugging x into the function plus the derivative evaluated at that value of x times the difference between that value of x and our chosen value, right? Delta x and dx would be the same. And so if that doesn't make sense, let me show you a really cool example where you can see this in action. All right, so suppose that you wanna approximate the value of the square root of 23 using differentials given that the function f of x is equal to the square root of x. And so how are we going to do this? Well, let's remember what we just found. We found that f of x plus delta x is approximately equal to f of x plus f prime of x times dx. And so if we wanna approximate the square root of 23, we have to ask ourselves, well, what value on the square root function do I know, right? Because most of us, when we see the square root of 23, we don't go, uh, I know what that is. It's about four point something, right? We don't know that, but we do know that the square root of 25 is five or that the square root of 16 is four. And so we're going to use that knowledge of nice values of the square root function to approximate this value using differentials. And so in this case, let's use 25, right? Because 25 is pretty close to 23 and we know what the square root of 25 is. And so let's let x equal 25 in this case. And so if we wanna find f of 23, right? We're looking to find the value of the square root of 23 and our function f of x is equal to the square root of x. Then we're looking to find f of 23. And so then what would this be equal to for this notation given that our x is equal to 25? Because we're going to be plugging this value of x, 25, into the function and into the derivative of our function, which we'll find then. But we need to know what delta x and dx are going to be because they are the same, but what are they equal to? Well, what do we have to do to 25 to get 23? Well, we can rewrite 23 as f of 25 plus negative 2, right? If you subtract 2 or add negative 2 to 25, you will get 23. And so what we have here is this form. We have x, 25, plus some change in that value. We are changing to 23 by subtracting two. And so in this case, delta x is equal to negative two, and that's gonna be equal to dx as well, right? Because delta x and dx are the same. And so that means that this would approximately be equal to f of 25 plus f prime of 25 times negative two. Right, we said that f of x plus delta x, or this right here, is approximately equal to these terms, which is what I just wrote down here by plugging in our value of x and dx. And so if we wanna evaluate this and approximate the square root of 23, 
we need to find our derivative first for our function. And so if we do that, we know that f of x can also be written as x to the 1 half power. The square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. And so if we take the derivative of that, we'll have that f prime of x is equal to 1 half x to the negative 1 half power, right? Because we would subtract 1 from 1 half to get negative 1 half. And then we could rewrite that to have that f prime of x is equal to 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x, right? We would move this x with a negative exponent to the denominator to have 1 divided by 2 times x to the 1 half power. But x to the 1 half power is the same as the square root of x, right? That's what we did at the beginning. And so then we'd have this form of this derivative, 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x. And so now we can go through with this evaluation here to find our approximation for the square root of 23. So we'll have that this is going to approximately be equal to the square root of 25 plus one divided by two times the square root of 25 times negative two, right? We just plug 25 into our derivative and 25 into our function. And so this will be approximately equal to five plus one divided by two times five times negative two. And so then we have this two and this two cancel out. And so we would just have five minus one fifth. And so if you have five minus one fifth, then that means you would be taking five minus 0.2. And so then we know that our approximation is equal to 4.8, right? So our approximation for the square root of 23 is going to be about 4.8. That is what we found here. And now just for comparison, if you were to put the square root of 23 in your calculator, you would get a value of about 4.7958, right? That would be the actual value. And you can see how close our approximation is to that actual value, right? If you were to round this up to that decimal place, you would have 4.8, which is what we found using the differentials in this case. And so differentials have a pretty cool use here. We can use them to approximate values on a function. And so with that, that's all I had for this lesson on differentials. If you wanna see some more example problems where we use differentials, I'll have an example video linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.